Okay. I'm going to uh, just tell you straight off the bat, I've made a mistake on the fuchsia. I've been that excited about the technology going into change, I've put it in twice. <laughs> that just shows you how ecstatic I am that we've actually been given the faculty. But for now, I shall pass you over to Bill, who will lead us in our worship today. Thank you, Bill. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. David's this morning. The service starts on page two of the white leaflet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. And keep you in the love of Christ. And we pray together the first prayer. Father of glory, holy and true, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness. And your spirit draw us to that love, shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we pray together, Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and lead us in this way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we stand for the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the colleague for today. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from the book of Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God, he will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that 
is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God. O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. The second readings from the book of James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, Have a seat here, please. While to the one who is poor you say, Stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who press you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law of the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith, faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. This is the word of the Lord. And the gradual hymn will be hymn number 496. Hymn number 496.
Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O God. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. And she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of the Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast out the demons out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the child's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon's gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by the way of Sidian toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. He took, as, took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers in his ear, and spat, and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be open, and immediately his ears were opened, and his tongue was released, and the, he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously he proclaimed it. They were restored, sorry, they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I think we're going to need tune there for the first hymn, but by the end of it, we all knew it, so that's, we've got two tunes for that hymn now, which is brilliant. Now there's a story, a famous story, so you may well have heard this before, about Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson who'd gone away on a camping trip. One evening they set up their tent and they fell asleep. And some hours later, Holmes woke his faithful friend. Watson looked up at the sky and tell me what you see. Watson replied, I see millions of stars. And what does that tell you, asked Holmes. And Watson pondered for a minute. Astronomically speaking, it tells me there are millions of galaxies and potentially billions of planets. Astrologically speaking, it tells me that Saturn is in Leo. Horologically speaking, it appears to be approximately a quarter past three. And theologically speaking, it's evident that the Lord is all-powerful and we are small and insignificant. Meteorologically speaking, it seems we'll all have a beautiful day tomorrow. After the pause, Watson said, well, Holmes, what does it tell you? Holmes was silent for a moment and he said, what's a new imbecile someone stolen our tent? <laughs> Whenever I've read the story of Jesus and the Syrophoenician woman, our gospel reading today, it's always felt a little bit off and I could never really explain why. It seems to me that Jesus is actually being rude to that woman because the Jews used to refer to the Gentiles as dogs and it was really offensive at the time. Why would then the books of St. Mark and St. Matthew include a story showing Jesus being rude to the Gentiles? The first misconception is that we often see that Jesus called the woman a dog, but he doesn't actually say that. He doesn't say, you are a dog. He simply used a rather strong expression to speak about Gentile people in general. And he's talking about giving the food to the Jewish people first, before the Gentiles. He says, first let the children eat what they want. Those are the Jewish people, for it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. 
So his ministry at that time was focused on those Jewish people. But Jesus treats people as individuals, whoever we are and wherever we've come from. And we see in this story that the woman actually isn't offended at all. <clears throat> the translation of the word dogs would rather actually at the time have been little dogs, which takes a little bit of the sting out of it, but there's still a sting there for people who read it today. Let's hope it's more like my dog Pixie than Casper, if you remember what Casper was like. And though this may appear, as the theologian F.W. Bear has suggested, that this is an atrocious saying and based on the worst kind of chauvinism, one Bible commentator has put it into a more sensible context. I don't know if you've heard of Dick France. I know he's done a lot of work. He came to Bangor University and did a lot of work there. And he explains his passage really well. He says, written words cannot convey a twinkle in the eye. And it may be that Jesus was almost jocularity presenting her with the sort of language she might expect from a Jew in order to see how he would react. So he's turned the whole of this Bible reading on his head. Certainly the woman's response would support this interpretation. The woman definitely doesn't take offence. And it shows her faith by answering Jesus back in the same tone. Yes, Lord, she replies. Even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs though. So it could almost be almost like a sarcastic conversation they had between each other. But then Jesus commends her faith, saying, For such a reply, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. Yet how many people have lost out by rereading that wrong, or even in our lives have lost out on the great blessing of being part of a church community because they've reacted negatively to something that's offended them? In my old parish down in Mid Wales, I took a funeral of a woman whose husband had been a great stalwart of the church until about 20 years ago when he fell out with the vicar about the colour of a church carpet. <laughs> I know, it's unbelievable, isn't it? The, the colour of a church carpet. He hadn't darkened the door since. And I think he genuinely regretted that he'd stopped coming to church at the time of his wife's death. That's such a sad reason to stop attending church. As a church family, we all go through times of conflict, and it's how we react to that conflict that really matters. Coming to church is about us and God and our relationship to him, to praise and worship him. Look, I know there is great hurt in the church. I know many of you will have gone through hurt, and I've gone through hurt in the church. And in those times, we need to remind ourselves that God is in charge and not us. That vicar and the man could have talked things through with Christ's loving example as king. Now, also, if you look carefully at the gospel story, it appears though Jesus was not really inclined to heal the daughter of the Syrophoenician woman who came begging for a miracle. It seems as though Jesus at that point had had enough and just wanted to get away because it tells us he entered a house and he didn't want anybody to know that he'd gone there. Now I know I've felt like that at times, and I'm sure you have too. Sometimes life gets so rough that we just want to run away from everybody and just be on our own. And this usually happens when we only go up here in distress or worry. So in terms of Jesus, something must have gone wrong for him to feel like that. And if you looked at the many events which had just happened before this point in our Gospel, it's easy to understand why. Jesus' public ministry lasted only three years, as we all know, of which the first two do seem to be fairly wonderful. People from all over swung to him, and the blind had their sight restored, the lame walked, the deaf were meant to hear, the dead were raised to life. But as the days and the years moved on, Jesus began to become very unpopular. The Pharisees especially watched him very carefully with the intent of discrediting him. People were taking deep offence at Jesus' words, and so he sought the seclusion of a friend's house. The more Jesus tried to hide himself, though, the more he became known. And if you think about it, it's very hard, if you're the light of the world, to be able to do that. Jesus was distressed because he'd come into his own, and his own had not received him. 
And so the time is coming for Jesus to reach out for those who are outside of his sheepfold, to those who would receive him. He gave them the power to be the sons and daughters of God. That Syrophoenician woman who had come to Jesus was outside the fold. She was a Canaanite woman and therefore a Gentile. She was persistent though in going to the source of life and healing. And when she found Jesus, she genuinely fell at his feet saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thy son of Joseph, of David. With Jesus' silence at that point, the woman might have been confused. She had genuinely come with a broken heart and much hope, but failed to see the fulfilment of any of the promises. Now, of course, we know that behind those words came a blessing of mercy and grace from Christ for her great faith. There are many who come to Jesus with a need and ask in prayer once, twice, or countless times. But when God is sometimes silent, they give up, and it's easy at that point to get discouraged. You might also notice that the woman never ever allowed her past to dictate what her future was going to be. She might have been considered as an idol worshipper in the past, but she asked for mercy. Not only that, but she also never ever gave up. She kept pleading to Jesus for help. Today, if we come in faith and receive in faith, we can offer up our news and I truly believe we will be blessed. It may take time, We'll have to place our trust in God, but it will happen. Amen. Down for the Apostle's Creed on page five. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We give you thanks and praise for your life-giving and life-extending love. May your church help others to extend their lives and to rejoice in the world. We pray for all who are working for justice and freedom of captives, for all who seek to bring food to the hungry and comfort to the lonely. Lord, as you raise us up, Help us to lift others out of their troubles. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember all who have worked hard and achieved nothing. All who have laboured in vain. All whose work has been frustrating. All whose work or livelihood has been destroyed. We pray for the unemployed the homeless, all who hunger and thirst. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God, strengthen the bonds of community here in Connors Key, where we live. 
direct all who have dealings with groups or the care of individuals. We pray for all who feel isolated or cut off from others. We pray for our own homes and loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all who have difficulty in communicating with others. Those with hearing and speech difficulties and the blind. We remember all who are mentally or severely physically handicapped. We pray for those caring with children with autism or adults with learning difficulties. We think today of all who have been affected by COVID, especially those who are still suffering from long COVID. Whose lives have been irreparably, irreparably damaged. And for all who are finding their lives restricted through illness, we remember those in our own prep parish, Dave Middleton, John and Maureen Kopak, and Bernie Attridge. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You have opened for us the kingdom of heaven. We remember before you the whole company of saints and pray for our loved ones departed. And we remember the family of Andrewlina Pendleton. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. And we bring our own prayers before you, O Lord. God, we ask that you grant our thoughts and petitions. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And finally, God, heal the world, fill empty hearts, feed the hungry, free lost souls, continue to fight coronavirus, forge us towards peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Merciful Father, Accept these tribes for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray the prayer of humble access together. We pray prayer number one. We do we not deserve the confidence of faithfulness, O Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. But in your manifold and great mercy, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and to you in us. Amen. The notices for this week, as Alex has said, can be found on the leaflet. Uh, you don't have to read the one about the technical faculty twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you would take them home and read them at your own leisure, that would be great. But we've also got another list of notices. Janice needs any full borders as soon as possible, please. If you haven't ordered any yet and would like to, could you please get in touch with Janice or see her after the service. Messy Church starts again on Saturday the 11th of September at 10 o'clock in the morning in the Institute. That's good news, that is. Yes. Food with Friends needs volunteers for the first Tuesday of the month between 12.15 and 1.45 at Rivertown. And there is a, they are short for the third and fourth Tuesdays also. So if you would like to volunteer for the Food of Friends, just go along to Rivertown and I'm sure they'll fit you in. St. Mark's would like to thank 
whoever is taking the ivy from the gravestones. However, could they take the rubbish home and put it in the green bag as the brown bin isn't big enough? No, it's not, not being collected this year, sorry. Uh, next church committee. This is bad news. <laughs> it's on Wednesday, the 8th of September. That's this coming Wednesday. We can either go along or do it on Zoom. And the Zoom number is on the white leaflet. The Institute. Please do not bring bric-a-brac to the Institute at the moment. We're not sure when we have a Christmas fete. Uh, but the Institute is in a bad way, leaning and having got rid of a lot of jumble means work can be carried out on it as soon as we hear from the diocese. Books are okay. That's it. You can bring your books in, but not the bric-a-brac, please. Okay. Now stand for the peace. Thank you, everybody. If you look at the institute from outside, you'll see it's starting to lean sadly. So I think the diocese are going to try and help us out and get it fixed before it gets too out of control. <laughs> oh, just finally as well, I'd like to introduce you to someone. Oh, he's gone. Has he gone? Has he gone? Oh, oh, bless him. You can see him through the system of the that's fair enough, yeah. If you see him again, he's called Renato, and he's going to join us here, so please say hello to him when he comes up. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also with you. We share one another a side of that peace. Peace with you. I've just been reminded that the officer here is 238. Him number 238. That's because I missed the first one out, didn't it? Oh, oh, oh. 
don't think I've sang that in ages. That's really lovely. Shall we turn to page seven for the Thanksgiving? We celebrate together the gifts and grace of God. We take this bread, we take this wine, to follow Christ's example and obey his command. And we'll turn to Eucharistic Prayer 4 on page 10 today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks, Holy Father, all powerful and ever living God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has restored to us eternal life. And so with the hosts of angels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim the glory of your name and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And we sit for the remainder of the Eucharistic prayer. All praise and thanks to you, true and living God, creator of all things, giver of life. You formed us in your own image, but we have marred that image and fall short of your glory. We give you thanks that you sent your Son to share our life. You gave him up to death that the world might be saved, and you raised him from the dead that we might live in him and he in us. Sanctify with your Spirit this bread and wine, your gifts to us, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Saviour Jesus Christ. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to the same. Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come in glory. As he has commanded us, Father, we remember Jesus Christ, your Son, proclaiming his victorious death, rejoicing in his resurrection, and waiting for him to come in glory, we bring to you this bread, this cup. Accept our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Restore and revive your people. Renew us and all for whom we pray with your grace and heavenly benefit. And at the last receive us with all your saints into that unending joy promised by your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. So we turn to page 15. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy, worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. So come, let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us, and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Post communion hymn is hymn number 170.
And so we sit for the sending out on page 17. <coughs> Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. And we'll pray the third prayer together. God of truth, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service, and the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. And the recessional hymn is hymn number 631. Hymn number 631. Thank you.